welcome. Today we're going to be talking about multi-channel marketing and how nonprofits can better reach their audiences and meet their goals by um, using multiple channels in their marketing. So let's dive in. So my name is Isa Hasty. I'm the Senior Content Marketing Manager here at Feather, and my goal is to help nonprofits better understand how to leverage digital marketing tools and strategies to meet those goals, right? And I get a lot of insights from talking to customers who are actually using the Feather platform. Um, and this includes a lot of marketers, often from you know, small teams or even solo marketers, but it also includes directors of development, program managers, people on the fundraising side, and I say that because even though Feather is a digital marketing platform, and I'll be using the terms uh, marketing and marketers throughout the presentation, really what we're here to talk about is nonprofit growth. So if you ended up on this webinar, it's probably because you have some specific goals around growing your nonprofit. So this might be you know, growing general awareness of your cause, might be driving donations year round or as part of a specific donation initiative. Um, maybe you're hosting a community event and you wanna sell tickets, maybe you need to promote a program that you offer um, and you're looking for new ways to get in front of people. So Feather can help with all of this. Um, and I hope that this webinar is helpful and that you take away some ideas for how digital marketing can fit into what your nonprofit's trying to achieve right now, regardless of what department you're, you're coming from, right? <clears throat> okay, so, oh, I didn't realize I said it to slowly appear. Okay, cool, we'll, we'll run with it. Um, so the agenda and some quick housekeeping items for today. So we'll be sending out the slide deck and the recording after the webinar. So be on the lookout for that um, in your inbox tomorrow. And if you have any questions as we go through the presentation, please drop them in the chat. Um, Today we're going to be focusing on, like I said, why nonprofits absolutely need to have a multi-channel marketing approach. Um, I'll touch briefly on the importance of audience segmentation in multi-channel marketing and how it makes multi-channel even more effective. Um, and then I'm going to talk about some digital ad campaigns that you can run to reach people in new ways and how that can complement the email strategy that you already have in place and even some ways that you can improve your email strategy to kind of enhance the results of your marketing strategy overall. And then we're going to finish up with some real examples of multi-channel campaigns that users have run in Feather. And this is going to include, I'll include, you know, the channels and the audience segments that they targeted and also show you the actual ad creatives and email templates they use just to kind of give a full picture of what the campaigns look like and hopefully some inspiration for your own initiatives. Okay, so why do nonprofits need a multi-channel approach? So most of you probably understand the value of multi-channel marketing, but let's talk through the concept really quickly and then I'll get into the reasons why nonprofits in particular benefit from it. So for just a minute, let go of all of the goals that you're working on right now, all of the projects that are top of mind for you this week, and just put yourself in the shoes of one of your donors or one of your supporters, right? So you are that donor, you're that supporter. Imagine you're scrolling through Facebook, you're seeing videos of your baby cousin learning to walk, funny animal videos, pictures from a hiking group you're part of, things like that, right? And kind of mixed in with all of that is an advertisement for a nonprofit that you're passionate about. Maybe you've donated before, maybe you've considered donating, um, maybe you've volunteered before, but the ad reminds you to visit their website, but you keep scrolling because you're kind of in the zone or whatever. Then the next day, you check your email and you see a message from that same organization. So that time you click through you learn more about their latest campaign and maybe you end up donating $20, $50. So scenarios like this happen all the time. We're all busy, we have short attention spans, we don't always like to switch modes from like chilling on the couch to let me go grab my wallet and make a donation. And that's just kind of the reality of it. Um, and so this is why we all need multiple reminders to actually get up the energy to do something, especially if that thing comes at a cost, um, like donating money or donating time. And so now let's switch back to your reality, your day-to-day -day as the nonprofit marketer. So how can you promote your nonprofit's mission and your programs in ways that account for the scenario that we just talked about? Multi-channel marketing is the way to do that. So reaching supporters and potential supporters across multiple channels lets you influence their behavior over time. So if they see you consistently in their online environments, um, you know, you'll become familiar to them and you'll stay familiar for them. Um, and the best part is that the more interactions you have with them in these different places, the more data you're gathering on them, which makes it even easier to get personalized and targeted in those interactions over time, which in turn makes it even more likely for them to notice you, engage with you, 
you know, um, convert, become a donor, become a, a, a supporter, um, even a repeat donor. And so, um, yeah, so let's dive into some of the more specific reasons um, why you want to have a multi-channel marketing strategy as a nonprofit. Cool. So first one is reduced fatigue. So the first reason to run a multi-channel marketing um, strategy as a nonprofit is that it helps reduce that email fatigue that we all have. So nonprofits do have some of the highest open rates of any industry, but email fatigue is still very real. Our inboxes are always full. And the problem isn't just that people are tired of receiving, of receiving so many emails, um, but often they aren't even reading them all, right? Because we literally just don't have time in the day. And so think about how many, you know, how many times a week you like archive or delete emails just to kind of clear your inbox or for those of us who are less organized than that think about the little unread red bubble um, on your gmail app on your phone so we can all accept that email fatigue is very real um but you know that the majority as a nonprofit, you know that the majority of your community does want to hear what you're up to so you shouldn't risk falling into that category of you're just emailing people and you might be getting left unread or getting deleted just because people have busy lives so reaching them on other channels ensures that you'll stay top of mind and you'll stay present for them without bombarding their inboxes um, and a bonus is that when you have other channels working for you and you have those ads doing some of that heavy lifting, you can actually be more picky about when and why you're sending emails. And this will ultimately make your emails more targeted and more impactful. And we'll get into that a little bit more later on. So the second reason why multi-channel marketing works really well for nonprofits is that it enhances your reach. So you can't email people that you've never met before. But there are lots of people that, you know, whose emails you don't have yet out there who would make great supporters or donors for your cause. So reaching them with ads is a great way to kind of bring them into the fold, make them aware of your organization. And then once they provide their email, whether that's through, you know, filling out a form on your site, making a donation, registering for an event, then you have their email, they become part of your community and you can reach them via email and more ads over time. Um, and Feather offers several different types of ad expansion, uh, or sorry, audience expansion campaigns that let you reach these new net new people with digital ads based on things like their location, their interests, their search history. And I'll get into some of those specific campaign types in a while um, in the next section. And um, yeah, but this is one of the best ways to sort of reach new people who you aren't sure how to access, um, like younger donors or volunteers in your area. Um, Consistent messaging is the third reason um, why, mar why multi-channel marketing is so powerful um, for nonprofits. So it lets you maintain that sort of cohesive brand presence across channels, like we talked about. Um, and, you know, when they see you consistently in their online environments, um, you know, across channels and across devices, they will notice and they will remember you. And if your messaging is personalized and you're telling the right stories, you're telling compelling stories, people will click through to your site follow and engage with you on social media, ultimately support your cause through donations and other means. And then the fourth and final reason is you can get a lot more targeted with your engagement. So, um, you know, you wanna maximize relevance and impact of each campaign. And when we get into some of the real life campaign examples later on, you'll see not only how multi-channel increases your online presence and drives more conversions, but you'll also see how different channels serve different purposes and that the context of the channel matters a lot. And there's a lot of data there that you can use to inform your campaigns. <clears throat> so for a donation campaign, you might want to reach a certain demographic that, you know, spends more time on social media platforms like millennials. Or maybe you're looking for, you know, high income individuals, in which case you can target ad campaigns to specific zip codes or, you know, to people above a certain annual household income. Um, and then also on a similar vein, you want to make sure that you are not asking for donations from the community members that you serve. You know, if you're a food bank or a family services org, you know, they should be seeing ads about the programs and the services you offer, which might need to happen through other channels. So it's important to diversify the channels that you're using so you don't miss out on key groups of people. And also make sure you're segmenting things properly so you're not hitting people with the wrong message for them, because that can also be very damaging or very insensitive. Okay, so for just a minute here, I wanna talk about the importance of audience segmentation as part of any multi-channel strategy. Um, and before I get into that, drop a yes in the chat if you'd be interested in a webinar that goes a little deeper on the topic of 
audience segmentation. I think it's something that people have questions around and I'd love to focus an entire webinar like this just around segmentation, some customer examples of, from Feather users and some recommendations of ways to think about segmenting your audience. So if that sounds like something you would tune in for, um, please drop a yes in the chat and I will get that on the schedule. Okay, so why is multi-channel marketing basically ineffective without segmentation? So running campaigns across multiple channels is great, but it's only going to work if you're being strategic about the types of ads and emails that you're showing to people. So multi-channel ensures that people are seeing you wherever they're spending their time online, but segmentation is the thing that ensures that people are seeing the right messaging for them at their at, like at the right time in their specific journey with you. Um, so to kind of continue on that, you know, we've all heard of the marketing funnel, right? And so this idea that people go from never having heard of your organization to hearing about you for the first time. So they enter the funnel right at the top. And then most people don't make a donation or sign up for an event the first time they learn about you. So you have to engage them and nurture them sort of down the funnel, takes multiple touch points over time, and then eventually they will convert. But when you apply the funnel to your whole audience, which I think is sometimes how it's presented, it sort of makes it seem like everybody is going through the same process at the same time. And that's obviously not what's happening. So really, I think it's more helpful to apply the funnel. Think about the funnel in terms of each individual supporter and donor in your audience and sort of how they're moving along in their journey with you. So the funnel does apply, but it, impl it applies to each individual person. Um, but of course, there's no way to do this manually or efficiently and customize all that messaging and outreach and outreach to, to every single person. Right. Um, and so that's where audience segmentation and marketing automation come in. And I just wanted to mention here. So Feather Flights are pre-built templates that help make all of this easier to manage and track. So you can select one of the templates. We have um, seven or eight different templates for different use cases that we've found to be very common for nonprofits. Um, so you can select one of those to kind of set up your segments for each campaign and run with it as is. So it's super easy to get off the ground. Or you can heavily customize a template. You can build one from scratch. There's lots of options. But the point is that it lets you set up your campaign so that people automatically filter into the next campaign that applies to them based on where they're at in, in their journey with you as individuals. Um, and flights also give you great like vis visualization of all of your campaigns. You can kind of see how one feeds into the next, how they're impacting each other and what's working and what's not from sort of a bird's eye view. So that's really helpful. And when we get into the customer examples section toward the end, I'll show you some real examples of customers um, flights that they use and sort of break down the different campaigns within them. But you'll get sort of a clear, more real life sense of what these look like um, in practice. And then in the next section, I'll be using the terms top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel, just to kind of show you where certain ad and email campaigns fit into the customer journey and into that bigger picture. But remember to think about it in terms of the individual journey someone's going uh, through with your brand um, instead of your whole audience all going through the same process. So hopefully it'll make more sense if you think about it that way. OK, so. How do digital ads fit with your email strategy? So let's talk about this um, real quick and then we'll go into some specific um, campaign types. So maybe you're already running some paid ads on social media. Um, maybe you even have some ad retargeting campaigns going and you're here to better understand how that should fit with your email marketing strategy. Um, maybe you're primarily focused on email and you're kind of hitting a wall with that. You feel like you're sending a lot of emails and not really getting the engagement you want. Um, and you're looking for some new ways to get in front of people. So in either case, this section is meant to kind of show you how ads and emails, um, ads and email marketing complement each other and how they each perform better when they're used in combination. So my first piece of advice kind of goes directly with that is use um, wherever you can set up both email and ad campaigns for any initiative. So this might sound like something that would only apply to like a huge campaign or huge appeal, but really you can think about all of your marketing initiatives this way. So even something as regular as a monthly newsletter, um, you know, plenty of people might open it and engage with it, but what about those who are receiving it and don't, or what about all of the people who might love to receive your newsletter if they only knew about it? 
And so this is where ads come in. Um, you can run digital ads targeting, you know, those people who receive your, your newsletter every week or every month, but don't open it, encouraging them to maybe go to a specific page on your website or even just a, an ad with a gentle reminder of what you do and why they signed up to receive information from you in the first place. Um, and then to reach new people with your newsletter who might really enjoy it but don't know about it, you can run ads for that too. So we're going to get, I think, in the next slide into those audience expansion campaigns. Um, but this could be something as simple as running some ads promoting your newsletter to people who have shown interest in causes like yours or people who've searched for volunteer opportunities in your area. So the point is, don't just be showing up in people's inboxes. Even if they are already subscribers or you think they're going to be seeing every email that you send them, you need to also show up on Facebook, Instagram, anywhere they're browsing online, when they're reading news, looking for recipes, online shopping, all of those places, right? You need to be showing up everywhere in someone's online environment to really have that impact, surround them with your message so that they remember you and they, that you stay top of mind for them. <clears throat> okay, let's get into... I set it up this way to like have each individual bullet populate, but then I have to remember how many I have. I never do it this way and I will never do it this way again. Okay. Um, okay. So like I mentioned, um, you know, you can't email people you've never met before and you can't even email people who know about your cause, but haven't given you their email address. Um, and so, you know, but you, but you can email those, or sorry, you can reach those people with, with digital ads. Um, so if they visited your site for some reason, they're in what is known as your reachable audience, which means you can serve them retargeting ads. But, you know, what about all of the people who would be interested in your cause, but have never heard about you, have never been to your website, they don't know about you. Um, this is where you can use these audience expansion campaigns that pull on third party data to connect you with new people who are primed for your cause. Um, and in case there are any concerns, you know, coming up about privacy, their personal information is anonymized until they decide to give you their email address. And then you can reach them in more personalized ways. But these expansion campaigns simply serve ads on the accounts and devices of people who look like the people who'd be interested in your organization. So what are some of these campaigns? Um, geofencing is the first one here. So this lets you target people in a specific physical location. So if you're a food bank looking to get the word out um, to neighbors about the services you offer, you might geofence your own pantries or nearby areas to reach as many people as possible who are in need of food. Um, again, this is where you have to be strategic because you might also want to run geofencing campaigns, um, you know, asking for donations, but you should do this in other areas where you know donors might be concentrated, like higher income communities or sporting events or, um, you know, other places where people with a lot of disposable income would be congregating. So you don't want to be asking for donations from the people that you're serving. Um, and again, that's where segmentation comes in. It's an easy fix, but you have to remember to be strategic there. So affinity targeting lets you reach net new people who match your ideal audience in some way. So this can be that their search history has, you know, terms that are relevant to what you offer, or they've made past purchases in relevant industries. You can also get into demographic and behavioral information like net worth, um, past donations, things like that. And we'll see a few great examples of affinity targeting campaigns in the customer examples later on. Um, search keyword campaigns let you serve ads across the web to people who have searched for specific terms that you consider relevant. And just to be clear, this is different than paid search campaigns um, that you might think of when you hear the phrase search keyword or keyword search. So unlike Google ads, which moves you higher up on the Google results page when someone searches for a relevant term, Feather lets you reach people with display ads wherever they are online after they've searched for one of these keywords that you deem relevant. So in the way that retargeting ads are showing up wherever people are browsing online, that's how these ads show up, okay? Um, that being said, we are working on a new integration with Google Ad Grant, which will allow you to run your Google Ad Grant campaigns directly in Feather as well. Um, that'll be coming out soon. So if you have an active Google Ad Grant um, account or you're considering one, you'll be able to manage that in Feather right alongside all of your other marketing campaigns very soon. So keep that in mind. And then last but not least, we have lookalike audiences. So this is similar to affinity targeting in the sense that you're capturing new audiences that resemble your current one. 
But with Affinity, you're selecting attributes that you want to target and you're putting in specific filters like pediatricians in Chicago or women in tech who live in the Tampa area, things like that. But with lookalike campaigns, you're actually selecting a predefined segment of your existing audience. So this might be, you know, all donors within the past year or all visitors to my volunteer page in the last 60 days. And then Feather will serve ads online to people who closely resemble the new people who closely resemble those people on those lists that you selected. Okay, so that was some top of the funnel awareness, audience expansion campaigns. Now let's talk about the middle of the funnel. So um, this is a really cool way to get a lot of value out of your email lists pretty immediately. Um, so you may have heard, we call it email ma mapping. You may have heard it referred to as CRM retargeting, matched audiences, custom audiences. There's a lot of different names for it, but in Feather, we call it email mapping. So this basically uses email addresses as a unique identifier to find people online and show them specific ads. And you're serving those ads to people as they're browsing the web. So again, just like retargeting and geofencing and all these other display ad campaigns where you're showing up with ads in the different places that people already are browsing, um, that's how this works. So just to be clear, no emails are sent as part of an email mapping campaign. You're simply using the email addresses as the identifier um, the email addresses that you already have to reach these people in a different way with ads. And so one benefit is that they don't have to have visited your site recently or ever to see these ads since the campaign runs based on the person's email address and not their website activity, which is how retargeting works. It's based on web activity. Um, so if you have a list of email addresses from like a community event that you hosted or a list of volunteers or a list of previous donors, you can upload these lists to Feather and then Feather will crawl the web to match those emails with IP addresses or mobile IDs um, so that you can target those people with ads around the web as they're browsing. So a lot of the time, these are people who have been to your website before, um, but maybe, you know, some of the past, like, um, you know, donors or volunteers, it's been a while since they visited. And so this is a great way to reach people who might not be in your tracked reachable audience right now um, by using this resource that you already have, which is their emails and all of these email lists that you have in, their, in your database. Um, and then quick tip on the technical side of this, we recommend uploading lists of at least 2,500 emails um, to ensure that you have, you know, a substantial enough list to run an ad campaign. The average match rate is about 50%, and this is related to, you know, the platform, the ad platform you're using, your CRM hygiene, so sort of how current are your email lists, and there's other variables that impact this, but the bigger the list, the more matches you'll have and the more powerful your email mapping campaign will be. Um, yeah, and so with Feather, you know, the, the ads in your email mapping campaigns will show up um, on many websites as well as mobile apps. Um, and we can also support email mapping for Facebook and Instagram. Um, and you can do this, you can already do things like this directly in Facebook and LinkedIn. I think they call it custom audiences in Facebook. And so other, you know, social platforms have their own versions of this that are available to you, but running it all in one place obviously makes it much easier to manage and track. And so Feather supports email mapping campaigns on Meta as well. So let's get into a few more um, ideas for segmenting your audience um, to run more powerful email mapping campaigns. So I'm just going to do this real quick, show all these. Okay. Um, so if you're running a donation campaign, um, you know, maybe you want to target specific groups based on when they last donated. Um, and so you might, you know, you might not want to ask people who've donated very recently to give again. So maybe you pull a list of emails of people who donated last year, but not this year or something like that. Um, or maybe you're looking for big ticket donors. And so you could pull a list of people who in the past have donated over $500 and run an email mapping campaign promoting your current donation appeal to those people. Another thing we see a lot is campaigns based on event attendance. So maybe you're trying to get people who attended a recent event to become a volunteer. So that's a common use case. Um, so newsletter subscribers. Remember earlier how I talked about, you know, running ads to your newsletter subscribers to get them more engaged. Um, you can also run ads to unsubscribers. So this could be to get them to subscribe again. It could be to get them to take some other action. You know, maybe someone unsubscribes because they were tired of getting emails, again, back to that theme of email fatigue and how, you know, that affects all of us. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they hate your organization, you know, especially since at one point they felt like it was a good idea to subscribe and they were engaged in some way. 
And so, you know, maybe they're a past donor or an events attendee. So it's okay to re-engage them in that way. And if you don't feel comfortable asking, you know, someone who unsubscribed last week to resubscribe to your newsletter, that makes perfect sense. So you can pick and choose who you're targeting here. So maybe you run this campaign to people who unsubscribed prior to three months ago, you know, um, just so that you're not bombarding people and being too pushy, but you know, you're reminding people that your newsletter still exists and that it has value and trying to get them to come back. Um, and as always, you wanna be thinking about running email marketing in parallel with campaigns like this. Um, and so, you know, you're already pulling segmented lists for these email mapping campaigns. So why not send an email to that list? Um, if you're pulling a list of all of the donors who gave over $500 in the past, it's a really powerful group of people that you wanna reach in multiple ways. So shoot them an email too. Um, that one, two punch of ads plus email is really what drives engage in, engagement and, and conversions. So. Cool. Another way to make ads and email work really well together is to send emails based on ad engagement. So for anyone that uses Feather, you'll recognize this filtering screen here um, that lets you create segments and get as specific as you want with the criteria. Um, so this is one I pulled from a campaign that we ran. So we Feather ran this to promote one of our case studies. So we use our own marketing campaign, or sorry, we run our own marketing campaigns in the Feather platform to promote case studies, webinars, blogs, things like that. So this was just kind of an easy example to pull um, to show you how it works, but I'll show you a customer example in just a minute. Um, so this is showing all of the people who have an email address, um, or sorry, who we have an email address for. So this field email exists. Um, and who are part of this retargeting campaign, which we ran in the past. And we added this filter, clicked add, right? Um, and so this is a segment that I can now send an email to, and it's people who actually were part of this campaign and clicked on one of the ads. Um, and I can run more ads to them if I wanna do that. But you can see just how targeted you can get here. And it's actually pretty fun to play around with the filters and get creative. Um, plus it goes without saying that, you know, engagement and conversion rates will be much higher when you're targeting segments like this versus emailing your whole database or serving generic ads to everybody that's ever been to your site. And then here's another example from Grace Marketplace. This is a one-stop homeless resource center located here in Gainesville, which is Gainesville, Florida, which is where Feather is located. Um, so you can see they ran an Instagram retargeting campaign here, um, promoting their farm to table event. And then they created a segment of people who clicked on that ad and then sent them this email here on the right, um, encouraging them to purchase their tickets to the event. So this is just another example of sending an email based on somebody actually clicking on an ad. And for something like this, you'll usually want to layer in some exclusions when you're creating your segment. Um, so, you know, because, um, you know, someone like say someone did click on that ad and then they actually registered for the farm to table event. Right. They got to your site, registered for the event. You wouldn't want them to then receive an email telling them to register for the event because they already did. So you'd want to create an additional segment of people who are registered for the, for the events and then add them as an excluded group on that campaign where you're sending the email to people based on the ad engagement. So you want to exclude people who actually registered um, from receiving this email telling them to register. Oops, okay. Um, okay, so now let's think about what we just looked at, but in reverse. So people are opening your emails, they're engaging with them, they're clicking through your emails to visit your site. And that is also data that you can use to create segments and then run ad campaigns to those segments. So again, coming back to that idea of always running ads and emails alongside each other to maximize impact. Um, and also this just reduces email fatigue. So remember a lot of people might not even be seeing the emails you're putting so much time into, but instead of taking that personally, just put that same information in other places to make it easier for people to engage with you wherever they are already spending their time. And then last but not least, what are you doing to, you know, drive someone to actually convert, whether that means making their first donation or maybe their third donation, registering for your event, signing up to volunteer, things like that. So everything we've talked about so far helps you grow your audience, get your cause in front of new eyes, bring those people into the fold, get them educated on what you offer. But getting them to take action requires the most segmented and personalized marketing campaigns. And you can do this with both ads and emails. So 
Behavior-based emails or triggered emails are one way to do this. In Feather, we call this auto-send, um, auto-send campaigns. I keep doing this. Um, okay. Um, sorry, I'm like <laughs> overwhelmed by these slides right now. This slide, okay, this is the one. Um, Okay, so behavior-based emails or trigger-based emails are um, one way to sort of reach people at this bottom of the funnel stage, reach them while they're really primed for your, your cause or your offer, but you wanna push them to really convert and you know take that final step. Um, so like I said, we call these auto-send campaigns in Feather. This is an email that fires off when a specific condition is met by someone in your audience. So this could be them you know, subscribing to your mailing list, visiting your donate page, making a donation, registering for an event, things like that. So this isn't like a one-off send um, that goes to everybody in a predefined list. This is automated and it only triggers when someone meets the, the specified criteria, which ensures that you're re uh, reaching people at the most relevant time for them. So for example, you know, if someone has visited your donate page and your about us page several times, you shouldn't keep showing them the same awareness ads or sending the same generic emails. Um, at that point, you want to tailor your messaging to the actions they've taken, which might look like an auto send email going out, you know, 30 minutes after they visit your donate page, asking them to consider making a donation. And maybe that email, you know, tells a new story about where the donations go or shows the impact that donations like this one have had in the last six months to kind of really encourage them to to make the donation. Um, and you know, storytelling is key when it comes to effective email marketing. You want to be telling stories that are compelling and engaging, but timeliness and relevance are also really, really important. So, you know, someone who was just on your donate page a few minutes ago is way more likely to open your email and hopefully make that donation than someone who hasn't visited your site in weeks. Um, and the same idea goes for ads. You know, retargeting campaigns have kind of an intrinsic cart abandonment element. Um, even earlier on in the in the customer journey or higher up in the funnel, you know, people are seeing those retargeting ads because of something they did on your website. Um, and so that's sort of like the ad is in response to some action they took. But as someone moves further along the funnel, they should see different content in those ads. And that's sort of where the true cart abandonment aspect comes in. So maybe this means creating more of a sense of urgency or mentioning that they were on your page but didn't complete their donation. Um, or didn't finish signing up to volunteer. So referencing that behavior will really catch their attention and feel more personalized. And since we're all in the nonprofit space, the philanthropic space, you know, you have a free pass to use some guilt tactics as needed to kind of get people on board with your mission. Um, so don't be afraid to get really specific in your segmentation and your messaging to get the job done. And sometimes use a little bit of guilt to get people to complete that donation or fill out that form. All right. So in this next section, we're going to look at some real examples from Feather users of multi-channel campaigns. Um, but before I get into that, if you are not a Feather user, but you're finding this information helpful and you'd like to get a more personalized walkthrough of how you can run some campaigns like this for your organization, kind of get some questions answered, drop a one in the chat and we'll connect you with someone who can show you around the app, um, help you out. If you want to invite some team members to that call, you can do that as well. So if you're not a Feather user, but this is helpful and you're interested in learning more, drop a one in the chat. If you are a Feather user and you'd like to talk to your CSM about how you can run more campaigns like this, like the ones we've just seen, drop a two in the chat and we'll have um, your CSM reach out to you to schedule some time. So if you're not a Feather user, drop a one to learn more. And if you are a Feather user, drop a two. Okay, now let's get into some specific campaigns. Okay, so the first one is this 2022 end of year donation campaign from the Second Harvest Food Bank of Southern Wisconsin. Um, okay, so on the awareness side here, they ran an affinity campaign and a geofencing campaign, and then they also ran an email mapping campaign, sort of middle of the funnel. Um, and then they did a general messaging retargeting campaign here, as well as, um, so this was to bring back some of those one-time visitors to the site to get them to learn more. And then any people who hit specific high intent pages on the site were then funneled into this top right, this high donor intent um, retargeting campaign. And then for those who still did not make a donation, um, 
they were then funneled into this donation dropout campaign, like those card abandonment um, retargeting campaigns that we just talked about. And these ads encouraged them to come back and complete their donation. So let's zoom in on a couple of the specific campaigns that were part of this flight. So because large gifts can make such a huge difference in a donation campaign, this food bank ran an affinity campaign using this um, top 10 charitable donor category which pulls people who are either in the top 10% of capital investors in the US, or they've shown other indicators that they donate large amounts to charity, which is based on their previous donation uh, behaviors online. Um, and then on the right here, you can see some of the ads that they ran as part of this campaign, which I think are a great example if you're looking for some design inspo. Um, okay, and then for this email mapping campaign here, they uploaded a list of about 20,000 email addresses associated with people who had previously donated. Um, and then they were able to target the people associated with those emails, with ads, wherever they're scrolling online, encouraging them to come back and give again. Um, and we know that email inboxes are full year round, like we've talked about that already, but they're even fuller around the holidays. So that's a great time to lean more heavily into ad campaigns like this to ensure that your cause stands out through all the holiday noise, even if people don't see you in the inbox. Um, and again, some really cute ads here. And then for this high donor intent retargeting campaign, they targeted people who had been to any of these pages that they listed here, um, which they consider to be um, an indicator of high intent to give. And they set the filter to, it's kind of cut off here, but 120 days. So, um, so yeah, um, anybody who had visited any of these pages in the last 120 days was targeted with um, this ad and others that look like it. Um, encouraging them to, to donate. Cool. Um, and then the results of this campaign were great. They reached almost 109,000 new people through the expansion campaigns. They got over 3,000 new clicks to their website and they raised almost $9,000 in donations with these campaigns. Our next example here is the United Way of Asheville and Buncombe County. Um, and as you'll see in a minute, this is an example of a simple yet impactful donation drive. So she ran only four campaigns total, and she's got a lot of initiatives in Feather, and some of them have more campaigns and some of them have fewer like this one, but um, they were really strategic. Th these campaigns were very strategic, and they brought in a lot of well-qualified web traffic to the site that then this United Way could retarget leading up to Giving Tuesday and beyond. So this campaign happened six months ago now, um, and a lot of the people who visited the site as a result of this campaign may have donated to the Giving Tuesday campaign, or they may have donated to something else since then. Maybe they didn't donate at Giving Tuesday, but then they were retargeted with ads. Maybe they subscribed to a newsletter, and then they became a volunteer. So it just shows that, you know, like even, in a, even a campaign like this that's very focused on a specific initiative and has sort of time constraints, leads if you if you do it right and you're expanding your audience and bringing in new people you you bring in new people that you can then reach over time that might turn into loyal members of your community later later on um and so yeah i want to show this example just so that you can see that you don't have to run the most robust initiatives ever to to grow your audience and to see results um and we've also got a great case study video from this customer where she talks more in depth on the impact others had on the initiatives she's running. Um, so that's, you can find that on our website on our um, case studies page, but Rachel's also gonna drop the link in the chat. So you can um, pull that, open that up in a new tab now if you want to save for later. Um, but she, she talks a lot about how Feather helps, you know, with the initiatives that she runs, and she goes into detail on a specific weekly event that they host called Community Nights. And they were getting super low attendance in 2021, like one or two families in, in the door each week. And then after just a couple of weeks, just two weeks of running some strategic campaigns in Feather, she was getting more than 50 families at the event every week. So definitely check that story out. It's super inspiring. And it shows how just a few simple campaigns on the right channels with the right messaging can, can really bring your initiatives to life or back to life in that case and, and be super impactful. So yeah, here I'll just be focusing on this Giving Tuesday example, um, but she's got a lot of great campaigns. So like I said, there's just four campaigns here. So this one had two awareness campaigns, um, geofencing and affinity. And then um, this was followed by a retargeting campaign that showed 
um, that con continued showing ads to anyone who had visited the site. And then they ran another retargeting um, campaign here, sort of further down the funnel, um, that got a little more specific by serving ads to anyone who had visited either the donor page or their hands-on Asheville page, which is a volunteer page, and they consider this to be a high intent signal. So here's just a visual to show the specific area they targeted um, for this geofencing campaign and how the map displays it in Feather. This is obviously zoomed in, but you can see kind of the how it looks in, in the platform. And on the right here, you can see the ads that they showed to people that they were reaching at this location. So um, anyone doing some early holiday shopping at Asheville Mall would have been in the potential audience for this campaign and might have seen this ad on their mobile device while they were shopping. Uh, they also ran this affinity targeting campaign. Um, and like we talked about earlier, affinity campaigns let you reach net new people who match your ideal audience in some way. So this can be their search history, you know, um, relevant purchases and in relevant industries, demographic, behavioral data, net worth, past donations, things like that. Um, so in this campaign, the customer simply wanted to reach people who have a, a high affinity for buying books since they you know, they'd be some of the most likely people to have books to donate to a book drive. And so they targeted people that um, had past purchases with Barnes and Noble, and she targeted them with these ads, asking them to donate books. And then for the retargeting campaigns for this initiative, she served ads like the one on the right here um, to anyone who had visited the donate page or the hands-on Asheville page, which is their volunteer page. Um, so you can see these, um, these ads here. And then this was the actual page. Uh, this is the hands-on Asheville page, and then this is the donate page. And again, these you know campaigns have continued to bear fruit well beyond Giving Tuesday, and they will continue to do so. That's just the nature of it. But they reached 16,600 new people through these expansion campaigns and got over 200 clicks to the site um, from those ads. So this example is from the Quad City Symphony Orchestra. This is another one that we have a great case study from. So Rachel will drop that one in the chat as well and be sure to check that out um, to kind of get more detail on this campaign and other ones. Um, so Caitlin Bishop, she's the director of marketing at the orchestra. She does a really good job with segmenting her audience to target people based on their past purchase history and their activity on the website. So for this event, Nightmare Before Christmas in Concert, Caitlin figured it would be popular among millennials just because of the nostalgic appeal. And so she used past purchase uh, ticket, past ticket purchase data to target people who had also attended their Beauty and the Beast concert earlier that year, um, since she assumed that there would be some crossover there in terms of interest in this concert. And then she also used similar data. She, she ran some campaigns for the Harry Potter 6 in concert, which happened after Beauty and the Beast and Nightmare Before Christmas. And she used the attendance data from both of those events to inform who she said, or who she targeted for Harry Potter. And the results from that one were even better. So um, she's super strategic about segmentation and using, using data to create those segments. So just to kind of zoom in on a couple of campaigns. So, after running some awareness campaigns to kind of get previous attendees as well as net new people to her event page, she then ran a few retargeting campaigns to serve ads to those people driving them to come back and, and make that ticket purchase. Um, so she did some campaigns targeting all website visitors and then she got a little bit more targeted and ran two meta retargeting campaigns to serve ads on Facebook and Instagram to people who had visited the event page specifically. So one of these was an early bird campaign um, which you can see on the left here, this was the, this was the um, ad for that one. And then she did another meta campaign the week of the event with more urgent messaging around the event being that Saturday, which you can see on the right here. For some reason, my computer wouldn't let me upload a good version of this image, so it looks blurry, but in the real version, it's animated. And then one of the um, slides says this Saturday in large font, and there was some other information and imagery. And so this screenshot doesn't do it justice, but it's a great example of you know, instilling urgency, reminding people of a deadline. And I think these two campaigns are a great example of how targeted you can get with your messaging and your channels and your timing. So instead of 
you know, stopping at targeting all website visitors. She really doubled down on the people who had already seen the event page. So these are naturally warmer leads as opposed to someone who's just visited your About Us page, for example. So she ran two separate campaigns at different times with different messaging to offer early bird discounts to the early birds and then to create, you know, urgency for those last minute buyers with the ads she ran the week of the event. And so just kind of calling out that she was very thoughtful about timing and frequency to really give people a chance to make it to this event if they were interested. And then also, you know, as always, channels matter. She wanted to reach them on social media since she knows that millennials are probably spending a lot of time there. And also context is an important part of strategic marketing. So someone scrolling on Facebook might be more interested in learning about an upcoming event than someone who's reading the news or looking up the weather. So it's all about surrounding them with your message in all the places to maximize the chance that you'll reach them at that perfect moment when they're ready to engage with you. That's the goal. And then here's a registration dropout email that she set up to recapture people who came to the registration page but didn't complete their ticket purchase. So on the left here, um, you can see that the trigger was someone visiting the event registration page. So it's here. Um, and then you can just put that, you know, you can just put that URL in there and set that as a trigger. And then she set the delay to 15 minutes so that they would get the email pretty soon after abandoning the page. So it's relatively fresh on their mind. Um, so you can see the delay here. You can set that to whatever you want. She chose 15 minutes. Um, and I didn't have space to include it here, but she set an exclusion for ticket purchasers. So anyone who did complete the transaction would not receive the email. So kind of like we talked about earlier with that Grace Marketplace example, you don't want to be sending an email telling people to register for an event that they've already registered for. So um, you want to make sure that you're excluding the right segments, not just including the segments you want to target, but also excluding the right segments when you're setting up your, your ad and email campaigns. And then on the right here, you can see what the email looked like. And this was also um, animated, which I couldn't portray here, but all of her emails are very cute and engaging. The designs are great. Um, and so that you know makes for something a little more fun to open up in your inbox. Um, and then, yeah, the, the results from this campaign were outstanding. She sold 196 tickets from her Feather campaigns alone and brought in over $22,000 in revenue. And like I said, the Harry Potter 6 concert, which happened after this, for which she was able to use data from this campaign and the Beauty and the Beast campaign, she got even more, um, even better results, sold way more tickets and brought in more revenue. So I don't have those results um, top of mind, but um, you can see them in the case study that she did with us. Okay, and then just in case there's any YMCAs or other associations in the audience today, I wanted to touch on membership as a goal. So we're gonna talk about the YWCA of Asheville in Western North Carolina and their 2022 membership drive. So this YWCA chapter was doing a special promo at the end of 2022 where people could avoid the fee to join if they became a member before January 1st. So this is a great example of creating that urgency around end of year or whatever deadline you might have. Um, and they ran some awareness campaigns to target relevant, um, you know, relevant prospects in the community. And then they doubled down with some retargeting campaigns that highlighted the special offer that they were um, promoting as um, along with more details about, you know, being a member in general. And so this affinity targeting campaign, um, they served ads to people who had a search or purchase history related to other gyms in the area. So like Curves, Anytime Fitness, 24 Hour Fitness, things like that. Or they had a search history, uh, a search history related to terms like CrossFit. Um, and so again, the goal of a campaign like this is simply getting in front of new people who might be interested in joining or donating or whatever the, the you know, use case is. Um, trying to get them to make that first click through to your site to just even know you exist, you know, visit your site, become aware, and then you can start retargeting them with those more personalized ads and hopefully they give you their email and you can email them and engage with them in different ways over time. But this is just getting those people for the first time to click through and learn about your organization. This campaign targeted, um, so this retargeting campaign targeted people that the YWCA considered to be highly engaged based on having visited, again, this list of pages. So you kind of list out the pages here that you want to target. Um, and so this included things like their About Us page, their membership page, what we do page, so on. Um, and this campaign was more focused on driving conversions, like 
aka new member signups. And so the ads are more explicit about the special offer and they create that sense of urgency. And in the first ad here, you can see in a second, once the next animation comes, um, you can see that they're referencing the fact that it's winter, it's cold out, you know, you know the winter blues is a big thing. Um, and so it's harder to get yourself to the gym, but you should still try. So kind of, this is a good example of using context as a way to drive urgency as well. Um, and overall, these ads just do a great job of communicating the information, but also giving a real reason for someone to be interested. So I think if you're looking for some inspo for the actual ad copy of your creatives, this is a great model for that. And the um, results of this campaign were great as well. So they reached over 16,000 new people. They got 44 new member signups from this end of year campaign. Um, and they actually ended up coming in $400 under their, or their allocated budget for the entire campaign. So Feather recommends um, budgets in your ad campaign. So when you're going and setting up your ad campaigns, we have budget recommendations there that help you kind of track and adjust and stay under budget. And so it's always great to you know, save a little money where you can. And so coming in under budget is doesn't always happen, but it's awesome when it does. Cool, well that wraps up our examples. So just some kind of key takeaways for today. Um, you know, We've talked about why nonprofits require a multi-channel approach. Um, it helps reduce email fatigue. It helps enhance your reach so that you're getting in front of new audiences that you can't reach otherwise. Um, it creates that sort of cohesive brand experience for people as they move around online. And it maximizes the relevance and impact of all of your campaigns. Um, we also talked about, you know, the importance of segmentation to really maximize your marketing efforts, because without segmentation, everyone is just seeing the same messaging, which leads to lower conversions, and in some case might lead to people seeing messaging that is absolutely not suited to them, which we want to avoid as well. And we looked at how Feather Flights help you automate all of your campaigns and ensure that the right segments are seeing the right ads and emails at the right time for them. Thank you for joining.